Zelda Kitties, I'm Kerry, the Vacuum Tube Witch. And today, I'm making the video number 200. And I've got something pretty unique uh, on my bench. Got it reverse engineered. And let's make a teardown of this. This is a uh, Unistom G9. Uh, Unistom G9 uh, dentistry unit. Uh, it was uh, used for sev certain uh, types of uh, medical procedures. Uh, I will uh, walk you through on, uh, on those uh, procedures, how, uh, how this thing works. It's uh, generally this class of devices is called uh, a uh, pentostat. It's uh, a genericized uh, trademark. And it allows uh, for for ferratic and galvanic uh, stimulation. It allows for testing the dental pulp. It allows for ionophoresis. Uh, and it allows for electro-surgery. It's a 1960s uh, and 70s uh, apparatus uh, built uh, in a factory that was just a few hundred meters uh, away from my old home in Wood. The plant was named FAMED, the medical apparatus factory. And it's pretty archaic, a little bit discombobulated, but uh, I managed to fully reverse engineer it. So, without further ado, let's get over to the bench. And I've got this thing of beauty and a joy forever sitting right here. Watch your eyes. It has a nice uh, design with uh, with cast uh, aluminum uh, side panels that uh, have this pretty distinct uh, 1960s vintage uh, vintage look. The enclosure has been uh, painted uh, milka purple. Pretty compliant with uh, the Caritex standards. This is the original um, part of um, the enclosure left uh, unpainted. Uh, this part is used to be grey. There was a nameplate uh, glued uh, right here, but it was lost for all the history of this device. On the front panel we've got a uh, volt and milliamp meter. We've got terminals uh, for electrosurgery. We've got terminals for endoscope. Basically the endoscope light. We've got terminals for testing the dental pulp uh, and for ionophoresis. We've got a function switch with uh, description uh, faded out. Um, the first one is for testing the pulp. The second one is for surgery and the third one is for ionophoresis. And uh, the last one is the long defunct uh, main switch that uh, doesn't latch anymore. More. And this is why uh, the, the owners, the users uh, of this apparatus uh, decided to make a uh, makeshift uh, replacement power switch uh, in a place um, of, um, of the pilot lamp. We also have uh, a backlit uh, acrylic plate. Uh, this was uh, used for some uh, observations and uh, and techniques uh, being done on uh, on tissue. 
with some uh, fixture inserted into this socket. So, let's take it apart. Don't turn it on, because it would be a little bit uh, dangerous to turn it on. And why am I saying this? We'll find out pretty soon. The whole device is uh, attached to this panel. It's uh, both the faceplate and the chassis. Yeah, the descriptions are long faded. Unistom G9. The logo looked pretty nice. 50s, 60s vintage style. I kind of like the aesthetic. I bought this device uh, with uh, with a uh, project in mind, with an intention of uh, getting it, taking it apart, and building an amplifier, like always. And here inside uh, the device we've got vacuum tubes. I wouldn't be showing this to you if, uh, if there was no interesting tech inside. We've got uh, two EL81 pentodes. We've got a uh, TG 0.1-1.3 Firetron. We've got two mains transformers. This one powers the, the generator with uh, EL81. This one powers uh, the, the rest of, uh, of the device. Got a bunch of uh, resistors and uh, capacitors on uh, this uh, terminal board. Also got a uh, power supply uh, on this part, we've got four DZG7 uh, germanium diodes as a full bridge rectifier. We've got uh, two electrolytic caps and uh, and two resistors uh, forming a uh, classic Pi filter. I will not be Powering this thing up, uh, it's a little bit dangerous to, um, to do. I'll cut it out, take it apart, but uh, before I uh, take it all apart, uh, let's take a look inside the enclosure. The power cord comes in uh, and uh, goes through two fuses uh, on both lines, uh, one on the neutral and one of the, on the live. Then, fortunately, there's no insulation on, um, on the mains contacts. There's the grounding terminal in the corner. So this uh, enclosure goes uh, off the bench. And on the ground, let's walk through the device. This is the function switch. It's a uh, latching uh, predecessor to the isostat uh, type uh, dependent switch. Those kinds of switches were used uh, in uh, 1950s and 60s radios. 
It only shows that uh, this device is pretty old. Like, uh, I've also uh, seen some uh, of those Unistom G9 uh, apparatus uh, popping up uh, on uh, auction sites, uh, being way more modern with, uh, with the real deal isostat um, type uh, switch. So, uh, Famed must have uh, modernized uh, the design. Uh, at some point. One thing worth showing is uh, that there are two potentiometers, but uh, they don't stop. I, I can turn it all I want. Certainly a bug, another feature. Oh, look, it discombobulated. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to repair those pots, I'm not so sure. We've got uh, a light bulb dangling on the wires, and why it is dangling on the wires is... Uh, the reason uh, for this is hidden here, right where the... Replacement uh, isostat switch uh, was attached. It used to be the the mounting hole for the for the light bulb. If I remove the isostat, should be able to do it uh, by friction alone. held with uh, some very long screws. But eventually I'm getting there. Here's the ugly isostat with the contacts bent with another section uh, clearly showing that it was reused from some other device with a uh, solder joint uh, breaking away right after I touched it. Nasty stuff! Are you still surprised uh, why I said uh, I was not gonna turn it on? Because I saw all the crap that was going on in, in this thing. And as for the light bulb, its original place was right here. It shone some light uh, to the outside. And let's go over the schematic because I reverse engineered this thing yesterday. We've got two main transformers. One uh, for... One for the surgical uh, section. Uh, this transformer would be this. And the lower transformer would be this. So 
so we've got two of those transformers. It's a uh, multi-section winding with uh, one tap uh, at the ground and uh, all others uh, relative to it. What's very interesting about, uh, about this section is that the generator made with uh, two EL81s is powered from uh, 50 Hz AC, not the DC you would be used to be to seeing. The voltages uh, on uh, on those windings would be pretty high uh, uh, from the ground. Uh, to the screen grid uh, adjustment, uh, it would be something like uh, 160 volts. And uh, up here, it would be almost uh, 500 volts. That's a lot. And uh, the anodes of uh, EL81 uh, are connected uh, through this wire wound resistor or a pair of resistors capacitor coupled uh, with this large uh, coreless coil and uh, there are capacitors uh, on the uh, outputs uh, of um, the surgery circuitry this would be um, this cap there's a parallel cap uh, right here and there are two caps uh, on the outputs and here we've got a ground tap and this is the feedback uh, winding uh, for the control grid going through the 6K2 resistor with uh, something like um, 500 uh, picofarads in parallel. This forms a very crude uh, high frequency generator that uh, generates the currents uh, for an uh, electrical scalpel used uh, for either electrocoagulation or electrotomy cutting the living tissues uh, with high frequency currents and now uh, by the way uh, this unit is active uh, only if the CH uh, button is pressed. What it does is uh, switching the, the screen grid uh, between ground when it's not active and the wiper of the potentiometer here when it's active. And my wild guess is that uh, this potentiometer, since it adjusts um, the screen grid voltage, it also uh, adjusts uh, the signal level being generated and thus uh, adjusts um, the high frequency voltage um, on the outputs. So. As for the other part of the device, uh, we've got uh, a uh, 100 volts uh, DC power supply. This is an uh, 80 volts windings. I uh, forgot to mark the voltages uh, on uh, each winding. Uh, I will do it now.
got some notes from reverse engineering this thing. So this would be... Hundred ninety one volts plus hundred sixty two. So that would be six hundred fifty volts uh, from the ground to the plate. It's very high. I don't even see any real high voltage uh, precautions uh, being used uh, on. Uh, on this part of the circuitry and this being a medical device it creeps me out there were basically no special uh, regulations uh, that medical devices had to conform to back then in Poland in the West maybe I saw the Tektronics, 1960s, 1970s, physiological um, monitor that had to use um, isolation uh, on uh, between the primary and the secondary. Had to be built uh, to more rigid standards, but not this. And the other transformer does, this would be the one. The last transformer, it uh, serves uh, two purposes. One of them this winding is uh, for powering a group of uh, light bulbs in uh, in this part. This is the switch when uh, when the fixture is inserted uh, into this tube. It activates the switch, it pushes it down, turning on the group of uh, light bulbs. They are all uh, 6.3 volts uh, 0.3 amp and this is the pilot lamp this is the potentiometer for the endoscope and the voltages on uh, on this winding 6.3 6.7 after the voltage was risen i uh, Recalculated all the values for 230, 6.7, 6.8, 4 volts. So here we'll, we would have something over 110 volts DC or 80 volts uh, AC going through a firetron and i guess that uh, there's certain face control on uh, on the firetron to give some uh, specific uh, pulse width uh, because uh, with uh, with ferretic currents uh, we've got a train of uh, pulses uh, at uh, 50 to 100 hertz and uh, the duty cycle would be less than 10% uh, with carbonic currents we've got a uh, different waveforms uh, 
Not sure if I got it right, but... <laughs> but, uh, yes, uh, in case of, uh, of pulp test, uh, the BM position, the AC current would be passed uh, with uh, adjustable voltage. Uh, it would be passed through the output uh, terminals and with uh, ionophoresis um, that is um, using the um, direct uh, current uh, to assist uh, the um, the ingress of um, of ions of uh, of substances uh, into the living tissues uh, it was the uh, it would of course use uh, DC, and uh, when um, when doing ionophoresis, uh, the patient uh, holds uh, one electrode, and the doctor uses the other electrode, uh, the negative one, to stimulate um, the tissue, and the current uh, flowing. Uh, out of the body uh, into the negative uh, electrode uh, would uh, assist uh, the ions of the substance uh, into in getting uh, into the living tissue and uh, there's uh, also a um, regular AC 50 Hz, uh, 17 volts max, uh, power for the light, uh, for, for the endoscope, or looking into the patient's mouth. And then the, there is also the voltage and current meter. The switching on this part is a little bit complicated, but uh, generally, generally the current flowing through the meter in the ionophoresis uh, position it uh, it measures the DC current and um, in the pulp test uh, it measures the voltage and uh, the pulp test uh, it's uh, it's basically uh, testing the the nerve response the the pain response uh, you test the healthy tissue, the healthy teeth, um, and uh, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't uh, be painful, but uh, the inflammated uh, tissue will be a lot more painful um, on th the same voltage. So uh, you can detect. Um, the alien uh, tissue with uh, when passing a certain small uh, AC current through it. So that would be it for for this interesting but uh, pretty unsafe device. I wouldn't dare switching it on, let alone uh, connecting it to a living person. Let's get back to the desk. So, one better look at um, the outer enclosure. It can even be hung on uh, the wall. What I'm planning to do with it is making an amplifier again. It's always 
making an amplifier and making an amplifier and making an amplifier and yet another amplifier, yet another amplifier, yet another amplifier, yada yada yada. It's always amps and always amps. Always new projects. <laughs> but uh, when I'm gonna uh, do it, I'm not so sure. And here's the other projects uh, that I started. It's the ASMR amplifier and speaker matrix router. The working part, uh, the relay matrix is already there. I'm designing the control PCB. I will need uh, the new front panel and back panel and I will need a lot of binding posts uh, for um, the inputs and outputs. But I will carry on doing this project and slowly I will be getting there. So stay determined and carry on.